You see, when you worship something, you adore it. You, you're just so proud of it. You just, you just can't say enough about it. The Apostle Paul wanted to, uh, uh, he, he wasted no time explaining how he felt here in verse 10. You see, when he came and he's explaining to the church at Galatia that, that when it came, when he stood and when he, when he came down to worship, he was, he was saying, listen to me, this is the only true God. And, and people have come in here and they have tried to teach you something different. And, and some of you or a lot of you have compromised your convictions and compromised what you've learned before. And, and people were accusing Paul of, pe uh, of preaching some cheap, watered down gospel. And Paul said, look, if I or anybody else comes to you and preaches some false gospel, let him be accursed. In other words, let him spend eternity in hell. Let him be uh, cursed from heaven. And he said it in two verses back to back. He wanted to make his point known. You see, because Paul loved Christ. Paul loved the Lord. He said, you've heard of my past and all like this. And, and he talked about when Paul had a, had a relationship with Christ. And he worshipped Christ through the good times and through the bad times, through the difficult times. When he was shipwrecked or when he was beaten or when he was in prison. He worshipped God. He never quit adoring the Heavenly Father. You want to know what God wants? More than anything else. He wants you to worship. And when you begin to worship, you begin to love. If you don't believe me, tell me something you like to do that you just absolutely love to do. Tell me somebody that you just absolutely admire. Because you see, what you do is you mimic them or you, or, or if a person, somebody that you really look up to, you want to be just like that person. Or maybe it's a place that you like to go, that you just fell in love with, you know, and, and you can tell every road, how the roads, how to get there, and what to do when you get there, and all these different places, because you love it, you adore it, you worship it. You see, we get attached to it. And God says, look, I want you, if you really want to know what I want, I want you to worship me. And when you begin to worship God, you begin I love Him. Amen? Amen? Number two, when you begin to worship, you begin to learn. When you, when you worship, you begin to learn. Not only you begin to love, but you begin to learn. Look at verse number four. Who gave Himself for our sins, that He might deliver us from the present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. To whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that you are so soon removed from Him that called unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Have you ever noticed that when you begin to idolize or worship something, that you something that you really admire, something that you adore, that you begin to find out about it, to find out as much as possible about it. You ever notice that? The problem with the churches at Galea is they stop worshiping God. They, they begin to become influenced by other Gospels. And they left totally confused. It left them totally confused. And Paul said, and this is what he says here in verse uh, 6, I marvel, I'm shocked that you're so soon removed. He started the majority of these churches right here in Galatia. And he's writing a letter and he said, look, as we started these churches here, you knew the truth. You know what Christ has done. And now somebody else has came in there and taught you something different and you are falling for this. I'm just shocked. I'm surprised. So soon that you would fall for something like this. You see, we live in a time that when it comes to the gospel, listen carefully, most people are confused. People are teaching a perverted gospel. People are falling into cults every day. 
More than ever before. People are, 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 are believing that any kind of religion is okay. As long as I got the right kind of music or got the right kind of preacher or got something that I want to hear or, or the people I like, everything's fine. And it doesn't matter what God you worship or what is preached from the pulpit. It doesn't make no difference. Any religion's okay. Listen to this very carefully. You want me to tell you how important worship is? If you're not worshiping God, you're not learning. If you're not learning, you're confused. And if you're confused, you'll believe anything. And if you believe anything, you're headed for a spiritual disaster. You see, that's exactly where these churches, these churches were at in Glade. You see, one thing that when you begin to worship, you begin to love God, you begin to adore Him, and you begin to, then you begin to learn more about Him. I want to learn more about my Savior. I want to learn about more about grace. I want to learn more about His mercy. I want to learn more about heaven. I want to learn more about hell. I want to learn more about who God is. I want to learn. And when you begin to worship God, First of all, you begin to love. Second of all, you begin to learn. Number three, when you worship God, you begin to live. When you worship God, you begin to live. Notice verse 13. For you have heard in my conversations in time past that in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. In providence, in the Jews' religion, above me and my evil, in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. Paul said, you've heard about my testimony. You've heard about in times past. How I was climbing up the corporate ladder. I passed people of my equal. I learned more than everybody else. I would, I, the, the high priest, the highest people counted on me because I learned and I, I did this and I did that. And I was more zealous. I was on fire for what I was doing. And now when I look back, I see I've wasted so much of my life. Because that's all that mattered to me. Was, was learning did their ways and learning this, this, these pagan ways and making sure that I could go as high as I could. That's all that mattered to me. And now I look back and I see I've wasted my life. If you have your handouts with you, if you want to turn in your Bibles, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, turn to Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, or like I said, it's on your handout. And Paul's writing to another church here, the church of Philippi. And I want you to notice in verse 21 what he says. He says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I will not. For I am in a straight bewitched, confused. I am in a straight bewitched too. Having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Notice his life after he was saved. Many of you know the story about him on the road to Damascus. Trying to destroy Christianity. Binding women, children, whatever it took throwing him into prison. And God struck him on the road blind. That self-reliant man became reliant on God. 